Welcome back. Upfront executive producer and political correspondent Matt Smith joins us now from the Capitol, where he talked with Assembly Speaker Robin Voss this past week. And Matt, we've learned some new details about that ongoing Republican-led review of the 2020 election. Adrian, Speaker Voss says he wants Mike Gableman to wrap up this investigation by the end of February. He also revealed his ongoing continued conversations with former President Donald Trump, as we're seeing new insight and new emails surrounding this investigation. We've reviewed hundreds of emails sent to Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, obtained by Upfront through an open records request. We wanted to know what voters and Speaker Voss were saying in the days and months following the 2020 presidential election. As Michael Gableman discovered just before Christmas in Chippewa County. I'm scared you don't have the resources you need to really dig into everything. The email showed dozens of people telling Speaker Voss to do more, like this email from a voter in Sherwood. The word is that you're not doing your job. We all know that the election was stolen and we have the proof. We are looking for prosecutions. We will not stop. I am demanding a cyber forensic audit be started as soon as possible, a Nina voter said. Ten months have gone by with little to nothing being done. A smaller group criticized the review. A Green Bay voter wrote, Please stop spending tax dollars on the 2020 elections. Gableman's incompetent review of the 2020 vote should end. Another person emailed, stop the cheating. If you're so concerned about making all of elections fair and secure, then stop spreading the lie that implies that Joe Biden didn't really win. And this is where Matt begins his conversation with Speaker Voss. Well, there's certainly very hot opinions on both sides. Um, Republicans want to make sure that what happened doesn't happen again. Democrats are perfectly happy with what occurred because their guy won. In emails we've received and others have received, there's no communication that has been made public between you and Mike Gableman. Do you guys communicate via email? No. Why not? We just talk on the phone. Voss has become a central figure in the investigation. A Dane County judge has ordered him to sit for a deposition Tuesday as part of a liberal group's lawsuit seeking public records. I mean, I, I have to follow whatever court orders are issued. Um, you know, if the idea is that because we don't have enough records, there must be some kind of nefarious, you know, process. Well, the records are the records. We have the records. We turn those over. We did nothing wrong. But again, this is not about getting at the truth. This is about the left. George Soros funded liberal organizations trying to smear people's public persona, trying to say that somehow we did something wrong when all we're trying to do is get at the truth. Voss is facing immense pressure not only from some voters, but former President Donald Trump, who maintains a relationship with the Wisconsin Assembly Speaker. Oh yeah, I mean, I've talked to him, I won't say on a regular basis, but half a dozen times, um, just to kind of keep him up to date, uh, to make sure that he understands what's happening, to know that we are doing our very best. Well, he's still the, one of the leaders of our party. It's still important that um, he is out there continuing to say uh, what happened in 2020. I think we've seen most people have accepted that the election is behind us. We're not gonna overturn the election. From these, these voices you're hearing of conservatives who, who say and insist still that, that the election was stolen, which I assume you disagree with uh, at this point. How much are, are, are they fueling this this public push for this investigation to continue? I think they are. I mean, do I believe that the election had shenanigans that happened during it? I absolutely do. Let me ask you about State Senator Kathy Bernier quickly. She has called for this investigation to end. She told us that there are fellow Republicans privately thanking her for what she called her bravery. What do you think of that? Well, Kathy Burton is a friend of mine. Um, she and I have served together for a long time. I have a great deal of respect. I don't agree with her on this topic. There is a couple of new proposals related to the election that some of your colleagues ha have put out already. One would dissolve the Elections Commission, uh, put in charge the Secretary of State. Do, do you like that idea? I don't. Not going to go anywhere? Not in my mind. I mean, I, I don't like the idea of saying we're going to have a partisan elected official in, in charge of elections because if it's a Republican, Democrats are going to spend the next four years saying how they're ill illegitimate because a Republican was in charge of elections and vice versa. Um, the Elections Commission should just follow the rules. Um, they chose to go rogue during the pandemic. That was absolutely wrong. Do you still want the commission members criminally charged? You know, that's going to be up to what I've said before is that's really up to the district attorney to look at. Um, but when you have commissioners basically saying, we know we're breaking the law, but we should do it anyways. Um, how do you say that somebody who goes shoplifting because they're hungry, it's okay for them to say, I know it's breaking the law, but we're hungry. But that person should be charged. Uh, you can't just choose to not follow the law because you think you have an altruistic motive. You have to follow the law whether you agree with it or not. That's the basic principle of our democracy. So Dean Knudsen, for example, a Republican you appointed, you would be fine if he was taken away in handcuffs and charged with felonies? Well, that will be up to the district attorney. He made a decision. He has to stand by that decision. On the tape, 
or on the video, he actually shows where he says, I think this is wrong. It's probably illegal for us to do that. That's up to somebody else to decide. I'm not the prosecutor, I'm not the judge, I'm not the jury. But I certainly think if you choose to break the law, you have to pay a price. The end goal, Voss says, is the Gableman report and legislation to come from his findings. Legislation most certainly to be vetoed by Democratic Governor Tony Evers. I've been very clear with Justice Gableman that I want to have legislation on the floor to be able to pass no later than the end of our session, which concludes in March. So that means I really need his report by the end of February for us to be able to utilize that as part of the evidence that we present to the people of Wisconsin as to why we need to make the changes that are necessary uh, in March. All right, Adrian, the new session here at the Capitol gets underway later this month. We are in the midst of a political year and already a political season. And that just Friday, we learned State Senator Kathy Bernier won't seek re-election. She made the announcement in her district. Matt, thank you. Attorney General Josh Call is suing Michael Gableman, arguing his subpoenas are invalid. This past week marked one year since the January 6th Capitol riots. Call joined several other attorneys general to criticize the ongoing election reviews. The RNC announced Friday Milwaukee is one of four finalist cities to host the Republican National Convention in 2024. The other three cities they're considering are Nashville, Pittsburgh, and Salt Lake City. Committee members will visit Milwaukee in the near future and narrow down the list from four to three. UW System President Tommy Thompson announced Friday he'll resign as interim UW System President. That's effective in March, Thompson wrote. While I firmly believe the pursuit of excellence never ends, I am satisfied that I have accomplished what has been asked of me and what the people of this state have sought. Our editorial partner, WISPolitics.com, is covering the search for a replacement. You can read more on their website, WISPolitics.com. Coming up, more restaurants requiring proof of vaccinations to dine in. The creator of Wisconsin Foodie is standing by as the industry faces another big obstacle.